Taylor Lorenz and Chaya Raichik are like fire and water. You know, they're they're polar opposites. You know, one of them, a despicable, disgusting, horrible person who targets civil servants uh, with, like, bomb threats and murder threats and uh, has inspired multiple mass shooters. That's lips of TikTok. And then, on the other hand, you have Taylor Lorenz, uh, a journalist uh, who actually does journalism and uh, cares about uh, masking and, like, public health. Like, genu genuinely, like, a, a delightful individual. Now, uh, I don't know how this actually happened. Because they've been sniping at each other for a long time. Uh, mostly Taylor Lorenz, like, asking, like, act like just r genuine journalistic questions. And Taylor and, and Chaya Raichik uh, responding with... A bunch of bile, essentially. Now, somehow, Taylor Lorenz got Chaya Raichik to agree to an hour-long interview. And I don't know how this happened, but it is one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. Now, I haven't seen the full thing. I've only seen a couple select clips from it, but it is actually completely and utterly bizarre because the interview shows that Chaya Raichik does not know how to act like a human being it like it like genuinely so let's uh let's take a look let's get into it shall we got it ready to go engage is that a public park or is that a private? No, private. private. Oh. All right, well, we'll try to keep it short. Okay. Thank, Thank you so you. much. It. Yeah, of course. Oh my gosh, the struggles yeah. of LA, I swear. Um, okay, well, now that we're going. Um, so thank you so much for meeting. First of all, I saw Seth Dillon today saying that you guys are no longer affiliated. What happened with there? I know that he was invested in you. Seth, Seth Dillon is the um, CEO of the Babylon Bee, a conservative comedy website with you know one joke mostly at the expense of trans people early was a huge supporter of you what happened to that relationship uh just parted ways for what reason personal reasons yeah yeah what you didn't align totally with amicable i love seth yeah He's a great mentor so why wouldn't you want him involved or you know, why isn't he involved in the business anymore? Just personal reasons. I'm not going to get into it. Oh, okay. When did that, when did that sort of break off? Um, recently. Uh-huh. So how many staffers? <laughs> like, it's just started. We're less than a minute in. The energy of this interview is already really weird. Like, it's already really weird, guys. <laughs> Tell me a little bit more about your organization. We are a small team, uh, just a couple people. And it's all distributed? It's what? It's all distributed, as in it's all remote, pretty much? Or uh, do you guys, yeah, do you yeah. Office space? it's remote, yeah. Got it. So when did you start, I guess, what got you into all this? I've always wanted to ask you. I know, I mean, I wrote about sort of the history of your Twitter account, but how did you get involved with politics? Uh, if you watch any of my interviews, I talk about this all the time. Now, if you can't tell, um, she came, Chaya Raichik came to the interview with a t-shirt of Taylor Lorenz, like, with an image of Taylor Lorenz on it. I, I think it's a, a t-shirt of Taylor Lorenz crying. Um, like, full-on, she, like, the, the, like, full-on psycho mode, already engaged time but uh just you know covid radicalized me yeah in what and way? they were like forcing us to wear masks and not letting us leave our homes yeah. and uh you know not letting us work and and, and people losing their jobs uh, and then people now forcing a vaccine a, an experimental vaccine people dying from the vaccine so how did that get you interested in lgbtq issues i got it got me interested in politics and then 
And then uh, once I was interested in politics, I, I stumbled upon this, um, this whole movement and I was absolutely appalled by what I was seeing. Appalled by what? Um, the, radi the radicalization of it, um, the, the way that they come after our most innocent and vulnerable population, our, our kids. Um, the, the way that it makes, it makes, there's nothing logical about it. There's nothing logical about topping off kids' body parts. There's nothing logical about giving kids porn in school. Again, to really reiterate here, um, no one's chopping any body parts off of kids. That's not, first of all, that's not how any of the surgeries work anyway. And second of all, the vast overwhelming number of these surgeries are done on adults. There are very few fringe cases where they are done on like 17 year olds who are like about to turn 18 with parental consent. But, like, a, a child can't just walk into, like, a surgeon's office and be like, I'm ready, doc. Chop it off. Like, that, that's not how it works. That you, you can't actually do that. No doctor would do that. A also, teachers aren't giving pornography to their students. Um, there's, there's two sexes, and that's it. So, you know, anything out of that, it's just based on lies and nonsense. Yeah. Did you grow up, I know you grew up in a sort of a more conservative community, did you know any LGBTQ people growing up? What was your exposure to that community just in life prior to sort of understanding the world through politics? Um, I never really paid attention to it. So you didn't have any LGBTQ friends or anything, no. family members? No. So your first exposure to the LGBTQ world was through basically learning about it through the, the media ecosystem? Uh, through themselves, actually, they would say exactly what they, what their intentions are, what their whole movement is about. Uh -huh. So I learned about it through watching their own videos. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I yeah. What sort of videos were you watching? I mean, are you just all talking the about ones, the TikToks that you share? And stuff? I intend more on TikTok. It's all over TikTok. Yeah. Very easy to find. Yeah. Um, I'm curious. You know, I I feel like there's been, especially on um, my colleagues have done great reporting on sort of like this rift on Twitter. I know that you have a very conservative fan base and in your comments sometimes you'll see a lot of commentary about sort of the great replacement theory. What are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on that? What are your thoughts on your common your, the comments on your post telling me to kill myself? Horrible. Yeah, horrible. Yeah. Obviously against that. <laughs> like my my god like she she didn't she didn't even answer the question. She she's like, oh yeah, what do you think about people telling me to kill myself? Taylor Lorenz, who's a good person, a decent person, is just like yeah yeah that's horrible. It's awful. It's awful that people are telling you to kill yourself. Yeah. So will you come out and and condemn that publicly? Oh, I would condemn it any time. I'm against. <laughs> Oh yeah, would you condemn it publicly? Yeah, yeah, I'll condemn it anytime. I, I'm, con I'm, con I'm condemning it right now. I'm gonna post this interview. Yeah, like, <laughs> I'm pretty sure, by the way, like Taylor Lorenz, uh, and I, I'm not, I haven't double checked this. Um, I'm pretty sure Taylor Lorenz has publicly condemned uh, death threats towards Shia Rychik. You know, I'm against murdering anyone, of course. So you're against death threats against against me i yeah i'm i would i'm a big you know as somebody that's dealt with a lot of online harassment i don't i don't defend uh threatening to murder anyone but i guess i'm curious you know because a lot of times it comes after an attack from the, in the media like some, someone like you or another journalist the the lack of awareness here like you know, oftentimes the death threats and stuff come after you or another journalist, like, highlight me. Do you think she's, like, mentally capable of connecting that to what she does to a much larger audience of, like, right-wing psychopaths who are, like, furiously building bombs in their basements? 
and then like calling in bomb threats to schools. Like she's literally inspired her, like her her reporting has literally inspired multiple mass shooters. So are you saying that like Well, no, see that's the thing, right? Um Oh god, 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 who said it? Malachi. Exactly. This is why fascism is anti-intellectual. It's anti-introspection. Because fascism relies on people being completely unable to identify hypocrisy in their own ideas and views. Completely blinding them to uh, the disparity they're creating between themselves and the other. You know? You know, if somebody posts something and then attacks follow, that person should answer for those attacks? No, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, I'm okay. saying that they, they, people like you tell me that all the time, so I'm just asking if you think the same thing. Yeah, I don't think I have said that here, but I, you know, I think it's, I, I think it's kind of interesting, I guess, in the conservative movement, there's this ideology around sort of white nationalism, um, which is a, obviously kind of a hardline ideology that's generally been pretty critical of Jewish communities. And I'm wondering, as a Jewish woman, how do you feel about sort of aligning yourself with those people and accounts? You know, you see this sort of rhetoric in your replies. And I only bring it up, I'm not saying that, that you necessarily endorse that rhetoric. I would imagine that you don't. But how do you kind of think about those nuances when you're thinking about kind of the audience that you're building? Um, some of your audience says we should top off. She, she's Jewish? Yeah. Uh, that's part of why, I believe that that's a component of why she's wearing, um, the skirt she's wearing. I don't know if we've actually seen that yet in the video, but we will see it. I, it's a component of why she's wearing the outfit she's wearing. Body parts. How do you think, what do you think about she, that? Wait, she's not Jewish? My understanding is that she is. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. Like a girl says she wants to be a boy, so she tops off her breasts. I'm a big, you know, I believe in personal liberty and bodily autonomy so, personally. So kids should be able to cut off their breasts if they think that they're boys. I mean, I believe in gender ideology. I guess I, I personally, my, my feeling is that I believe in personal liberty. I grew up in a town where a lot of people for their middle school graduation, women got nose jobs. I knew. This is actually, like, a really good response. Like, yeah, I do, because I believe in personal liberty. That's an excellent response. Because it forces a conservative to, um... Forces a conservative to be like, well, I'm against y your personal freedom. And that's not a comfortable position for a conservative to be in. Especially from the party of small government. Somebody that got a boob job at age 14 and I I guess I struggle to kind of understand the criticism when there's certainly no criticism of that sort of thing right but then there's criticism of this other sort of gender affirming you know stuff so so you're you know, comparing a boy being allowed to chop off his penis to a teenage girl getting a nose job um well just to be extra clear I don't believe that 13 year olds are able to make those sort of medical decisions <laughs> Wasn't Taylor Lorenz the person who exposed who Libs of TikTok was? Yeah, because, like, um, she went, uh, Taylor Lorenz went to a house that was associated with Libs of TikTok, and then, like, Chaya Rychik opened, like, opened the door and answer, answered the door. Like, it, like, it was like a, I, I don't remember the exact sequence of events, but it was like a comedy of errors on, like, Chaya Rychik's part that basically outed her address. Minors are, yeah. Oh, really? And where? Yeah. Um, Children's National Hospital in D.C. gives 16-year-olds hysterectomies. Oh, 16-year-olds. They gave me that. They told me that directly. They said 16 girls. Yeah, but you, you were talking about 13-year-olds. So why are you now talking about 16-year-olds? It's almost like, your point is bullshit. And younger, that's what they said. So, so hysterectomies, um, there are definitely minors. I know for sure as young as 12 who are getting... 
uh, double mastectomies. Um, they allow, they definitely allow vaginoplasties for minors um, and phalloplasties. I'm not aware of a specific case of a minor, but they allow 18 year olds. Yeah. yeah I wish I'd... Oh, oh, so they, they allow adults. So, so you're making up this case of 13 year olds. You're, you're just pretending that that's, that's a thing. And then you're mad that adults can make a decision about their own bodies. Okay, cool. Yeah. I'm glad she just came out and said it. You know, okay, 18 so year olds, you're an adult. But let's just get back to the great replacement stuff. Cause I'm curious, what are your thoughts on that whole ideology? I mean, how many, there, there, there were, there were times that, um, <laughs> there were some months over the past three years that there were more illegals coming into our border than children being born in the U.S. Is that not, does that not look like they're trying to replace us? I guess, uh, um, sort of they're imagining America, America as a, a melting pot. Isn't that sort of what America was founded? No, but they're, they're actually bringing... I'm sorry. Just suddenly... Oh, that's really gross. I'm sorry. So, um, for those of you who are unaware, uh, Great Replacement Theory, what they're talking about here, is the idea that Jewish, like a Jewish cabal, a group of powerful Jewish people, are pulling the strings within the Democratic Party and uh, within the country as a whole in order to bring in uh, black and brown people from everywhere else on the planet in order to replace systematically the conservative white population. The idea here uh, among conservative conspiracy theorists is essentially that uh, the, uh, the act of bringing in black and brown folks is uh, essentially devaluing their status in society um, and turning them into second-class citizens. And, and somehow the World Econ uh, Econ Economy Forum, World Economy Forum, and the UN are in on it all. Yeah, uh, because they're run by the Jews. That again, that's that's the that's the conspiracy theory. The conspiracy theory is that all all of these world institutions, George Soros is in on it, the Bilderbergs, um, you know, basically the Clintons, all of them are in on this Jewish plot to br brown America. Um, this is actually, like, it goes back a ways. Like, I, I know we've talked about it on the channel before, but, like, um, the, uh, th this premise used to be a lot more blatant. Um, I know that Ann, Ann Coulter, I believe, um, was one of the people who coined the phrase the browning of America, Ann Coulter, a prominent uh, conservative figure who is uh, thankfully faded into obscurity, but largely her fading has come uh, as other conservative figures have risen. And um, yeah, no, th this conspiracy theory has proven to be so successful in America that it is now being exported to other countries like the UK. Um, it's disgusting, it's completely anti-Semitic, but oftentimes conservative commentators will put forward this idea of the Great Replacement Theory, kind of leaving out the anti-Semitic aspect, you know, in an attempt to try and make it a bit more palatable to their audience. Um, they'll just say, oh, you know, they are controlling everything. The global elites are controlling any, everything, you know, but they get cagey about exactly who those people are with the, with a couple of exceptions, like, uh, you know, George Soros, the Bilderbergs, um, this is all, yeah, it's, it's the, the eponymous they, you know? They onboard you with the white replacement bit. The JQ shit comes later. Exactly spicy diarrhea. You know, they, they want to ease you in to the anti-Semitism.
but the anti-Semitism is there. It's the, it's the final part of the root of the conspiracy. Who do you think is running the world? Uh, rich capitalists. Like that, the, the thing, the thing is the, the thing that's silly, right? The thing that's really silly about the conspiracy theory of like, oh, it's, it's, it's the Jews. It's not the Jews. It, it's just capitalists. It, it's, it's the economic system we rely on that siphons wealth and concentrates it into like a 0.1% of society. It's not, it's not a conspiracy. They get together every year to talk about how they can make more money. You know, when we, when we hear about, like, the World Economic Forum or da and Davos and all that jazz, it's not the Jews secretly conspiring against the world. That's just capitalism. That's just how capitalism works. What they talk about when they get together is how they can make society more efficient to make them more money. Like, that's, that's the entire point of that conference. And so they'll, they'll talk about climate change, but they're not talking about climate change because they actually give a shit about climate change. They talk about climate change because if climate change effects continue to worsen, it's going to hurt their bottom line. And they want to continue to make money. It's the money, Lebowski. So this is, um, it's not Jewish people. There's not an evil cabal of Jews running the world. And like they, oh, oh, the 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 conspiracy about this, by the way, goes that um, there needs to be this elite evil group of Jews, uh, because the entire Jewish race recognizes that they are a, a colossal, my like a colossally tiny minority on the planet, and thus they need to manipulate all of the other minorities into overthrowing the whites. Um. So, yeah. It's not. It's not a conspiracy. There, there's no smoke-filled rooms. They, they talk about it in the open because capitalism is the primary mode of economic production in our world, on our planet. Like it's not. They don't have to talk about it in secret. They just talk about it in the open because they're allowed to, and they have the money to do so. Zaxus, I'm going to ask you to be uh, polite, please. If you can't be civil to other chatters, uh, you're gonna be going. You're gonna be going real quick. Yeah, Fo Fox News, famous for pivoting back to the left. Tell me if this argument is missing the mark or dumb. When they talk about mutilating kids, no one ever brings up circumcising babies. Uh, no one ever talks about circumcising babies. That's true. Okay, I won't have an opinion. Okay, you can be passive aggressive by yourself. Clearly, clearly you weren't raised right. Like I'm I'm sorry if I if I'm like, "Hey, be be civil towards your other chatters. Be excellent to each other. We have one goddamn rule here on my channel, and it's be excellent to each other. And if you're being a passive aggressive little baby, about being reminded that you should be polite to your fellow chatters, y you're gone. I, like if you can't if you can't play with others, then you need a timeout. Like I shouldn't have to explain this because presumably everyone here is at least sixteen years old or older. Most of you, I, I see the analytics. I know most of you are like in your 20s or 30s. So presumably you guys should know how to play nice. You learn that at like seven, for God's sake. ...in more people than are actually being born. So I guess if you, it sounds like you sort of do ascribe to this theory of the Great Replacement. Um, how does that make I just you look at feel... the facts and the numbers. Well, so, I mean, just let's give a corollary, right? A lot of Jewish people fled, you know, Europe, came over here also as immigrants. Um, 
and there's a lot of criticism towards Jewish people in those movements, in those far right movements. So I'm just wondering as a Jewish woman, sort of how you feel about that and your role in cultivating. This um, also, we finished our first uh, thumbnail of the evening. I figure I'll, I'll share them with you as I, as I finish them. I feel like this, I feel like this one's all right. You know, I, look, I know I'm not great at thumbnails, but I feel like, I feel like this one's okay. The moon truth. I like it. This fan base, but might think that one, that one's going up tomorrow, by the way. It's, it's going to be a premiere. You all can watch it. You as an is that Armored Skeptic? Yep. We, uh, I, I've never covered an Armored Skeptic video before. Um, and I, on a whim, I decided to cover an Armored Skeptic video. And, uh, he, uh, he, it, it turns out he doesn't believe people landed on the moon. And it's a very weird video. And we dunked on him for about two hours. So, uh, yeah. Hey, Rambe. So anyway, that's going to pre premiere tomorrow on the YouTube channel. As a, as a minority, an outsider. Uh, not all cultures are equal. Man. You know, I feel like there's not... I feel like there is... I feel like people who are trying not to seem racist will make this argument. No, not all cultures are equal, but like I think that I think that you can in fact view cultures as equal because cultures change over time. Like they can be better or worse, right? Like uh the culture of America in the 1830s was not really that great considering that the culture of America was heavily predicated on owning people, right? So like, yeah, American culture of the 1830s very much a time and place type of thing and pretty shitty. So like, not all cultures are equal, sure, but also cultures change drastically over time. And I think that, like, when, uh, for example, like, I don't know, like, when uh, certain, like, Norse cultures, like, celebrate their heritage, right? Generally, they're celebrating the cuisine. They're celebrating, like, fun cultural traditions, dances, songs, um, music. What they aren't celebrating is, like, Oh, man, Re remember, like, 1,700 years ago when, like, it was a common practice among our people to, like, uh, tie, tie, like, a, a, cap a captive's limbs to, like, four horses and then crack a whip and then watch them get blown apart? Like, oh, man, yeah, no, no th th that's not what they get together and celebrate about their culture, right? Again, it's, it's time and place. And generally, the things that are being celebrated are, you know, the things people want to celebrate, not the darker parts of history. Yeah. So, I know you have a lot of concerns about educational materials and books, library books and things, um, especially... They're importing people who want to destroy America <laughs> and who... who want to who come here and and do not stand for what America stands for so and I think and we see it there's time after time after time after time they come in they're destroying our cities they bring crime with them and they they are bringing them in to replace us and um, yeah I think people from from various again they are bringing in people who are going to increase our crime rate they I, again, like, this This also goes into, like, racial conspiracy tropes from, like, birth of a nation, right? Like, 
part of what she's talking about here, like, yeah, they're bringing the brown people in, and the brown people are coming in here and raping our white women. Like, that's that's what she's, like, making an appeal to here. That same kind of rhetoric and fear-mongering is it, it like that it's there there's no daylight between what birth of a nation does and what she's doing right here you know countries you know they they're all different so you know just back to the sort of education stuff i know that you're interested in removing a bunch of books from libraries um, that you consider inappropriate i was just wondering out of all the books that you've sort of tried to get removed how many have you read I've read a couple of them. Uh-huh. Which one? <laughs> you've you've uh, banned thousands of books, hundreds of books. How many of them have you read? Two. Like, oh my god, girl. Oh my god. Quasi spec, thank you for subscribing over on Twitch. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And very knifey duck, thank you for gifting a sub to Spicy Diarrhea. I appreciate that as well. And uh Wow. Some of them didn't have pictures. True. Um also folks, we've been going for over an hour now. Remember, please hit the follow button on Twitch, hit the subscribe button on YouTube, hit the like button on the YouTube stream. And consider dropping those sweet, sweet subs and donos. Uh, Quasi-spec, very knifey duck. Thank you very much for your support today. Especially on, a, on this, the holiest of weekend streams. So, let's go. Once. Um, gender queer. Uh-huh. I've read This Book is Gay. Uh-huh. Um, I've read... Uh, oh, shit, Chaya. You, you read this book is gay, and and you emerged a heterosexual. But I thought, I thought if one were to read these not these these books, these holy texts of gender ideology, they would gay you or trans you. Sounds like that was kind of bullshit. I guess. Weird. A flamer. I've read. What were some of the other ones? Um, my shadow is pink. Uh, it feels good to be yourself. Mm -hmm. There's so many more. Tons of them. How do you kind of square? Would you say? I feel like you are, or at least I feel like you've spoken about free speech before and the need for free speech and sort of supported Elon Musk's sentiments in that area would you say that you're a free speech supporter yeah so how do you square the sort of being this free speech supporter with wanting to ban literature what? by the by the way just out of, just because i didn't recognize the the title um my shadow is pink is um like it's like a it's like a picture book. Innovative spoken rhymes. My Shadow's Pink is a beautifully written rhyming story of love and self acceptance that touches on the subjects of gender identity, equality, and diversity. The reader follows the journey of a young boy who's been born into a family with a long history of blue shadows. He wants to be just like his father, who's big and strong and with a defined blue shadow. However, the boy has an irrepressible pink shadow and loves ponies and books and pink toys, princesses, fairies, and things that are not for boys. With the love and acceptance of his father, he learns that everyone at times has a shadow they wish was different, and he must embrace his shadow just the way it is. Wow. What a, what a horrible grooming text. I can't believe that Chaya Rychek, after reading that one, is still straight and cis. After all of that indoctrination, how could she? How could she even continue to be a she? I don't understand. What kind of literature? Any kind of literature. I mean, I, I would think that. Yeah, it, it sounds very wholesome. I, yeah. Literature? Am I trying to ban? Oh, I thought you were just trying to say you're. 
that you have, I mean, you've made an effort to get books removed from schools. What kind of books? Books t dealing with LGBTQ people and sexual no, that's education. that's not what I said. Oh, so you're not trying to get any books banned from school? I, that's not what I said either. Okay, what? why don't you explain to me what, how you're thinking about this? You just accused me of wanting to ban books. What kind of books am I trying to ban? Uh, you tell me. I'm not trying to ban anything. But you're not trying to ban any books? Who said I'm trying to ban books? Are you trying to remove books from libraries? From public school libraries. Okay. <laughs> oh my god, it's the Patrick Starr meme, everybody. Who said I'm trying to ban books? I'm not trying to ban books. Am I trying to ban books? You tell me. I'm not trying to ban books. It, it sounds like you're trying to remove books from public school libraries. I am removing books from public school libraries. That's 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 a that's a de facto book ban. You're removing access from the people who would otherwise read those books. So, how do you square your sort of notion of free speech and free expression and Sam and Moose, I would hazard the guess that she's coming off so fucking dumb because she is so fucking dumb. Allowing all of that. Like like that that's the thing. Fascists aren't smart, guys. Like one of the one of the things, if you go and read like contemporary journalism about Hitler, everyone thought he was dumb as shit. Like they made fun of him in the press all the time because it's not like fascism isn't about being smart; it's about wielding power. And I think a lot of a lot of uh, libs, especially in America, conflate the two. But n no, they're they're different. With wanting literature removed and wanting access to information removed. What kind of literature? You tell me. Uh, porn, gay porn. Uh huh. Yeah. And what do you consider gay porn in these books? Uh, so you want you want to see it? Are you talking about the stuff that you've tweeted? Basically, you you can yeah, like there's pictures of like blowjobs and like how to have gay sex with like naked people and people masturbating and stuff. Yeah. Did you? Like, I, pictures of it. Oh, yeah. totally. And yeah. I, you know, I went to public school. And we had a sex ed class in public school where we were shown, you know, information about sexual health and, you know, sex and, and masturbation and things like that. Um, I'm curious about your own education. I mean, was that something you were, were you ever, did you ever go to a sex ed class or is this all sort of new to you where you're sort of learning about how this works in public schools? Um, I'm not, I wasn't, I don't live under a rock. So you did have sex ed classes when you were growing up? Um, we had some kind of education, yeah. Uh-huh, so you do think it's important for children to have education, sex education? Uh, not the way they're doing it in public schools. Uh-huh, how are they doing it? Uh, they're giving kids porn and telling, uh, third graders that they should masturbate, um, Now, like, what, again, I, oh god, I wanna, I wanna do the follow-up question here so, so badly. Now, when you say they're giving kids porn, are they, like, downloading Pornhub videos? To, to their iPads or something? Or wh what do you mean? What do you mean by that? Like, you, you think that you go into a third grade classroom and, like, the teacher's like, okay, kids, it's, it's your 15-minute your masturbation time. Like, what, what are you talking about? That, that's not happening. Literally not once. <laughs> They're giving middle school children guides to gay sex and anal sex, um, sex toys. How would you describe and the type of sex education that you would like to see in schools? Um, at this point, I want all sex education actually removed from schools because I don't trust the schools to do it. Okay. After what we've seen, I don't trust them at all. Zero. We need to completely eradicate it and then re redo it in a, in a normal way that's appropriate. So I saw you said that you got banned from Stripe today. How much money did you have tied up in that platform? Um, I'm, I'm not going to get into that. Mm -hmm. they, they, they already restored me. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you're back. Yeah. Um, I noticed, you know, I think it was around last summer, you deleted a lot of your tweets and you kind of stopped posting. This is when Seth Dillon kind of tweeted, you know, asking if you fell off or, you know, saying that you weren't posting as you used to. What happened during that time? And did you think about quitting? I have no idea, and no, I never thought about quitting. Mm -hmm. Why'd you delete all your old posts? 
It was just a one-time editorial decision. I stand by all my posts. It, it was a one-time editorial decision to delete all your posts, but you stand by them? Then, but if you stand by them, why did you delete them? Yeah, she got banned by, from Stripe by, for like half a day. Um, you know, I, I guess speaking of deleting posts, you still have a post up accusing the Uvalde shooter of being trans. Um, obviously that's been debunked. Yeah, there's a community note on it. Uh-huh. So yeah. why not remove that post if you're so comfortable with removing posts? Because there's a community note. I think it's clear. It's, it's obviously, it was, obviously it was unintentional. Yeah, there's a community note on it, but that doesn't absolve you of being wrong about it. Like, even with the community note, you are still actively participating in spreading disinformation about it. It was, it, there was a watermark on it. It was from a meme, uh, an account that was going around. Um, and I'm glad there's a community note so people know. No, no this, this is exactly it. They condense can of meat. That's exactly it. They think it's funny to lie. They think it's funny to target random trans people who are unaffiliated with mass shooters, you know? I saw a version of the meme going around uh, that had Alana Farrell on it. Um, the, uh, Alana Farrell is a, a trans MMA fighter, um, and there's a picture of her holding, like, uh, an assault rifle in front of the trans flag, and they put that into this meme of trans mass shooters uh, that is riddled with inaccuracies. Most of the pictures on there are just trans people who exist that haven't actually engaged in any massacre. And, like, they, they just keep sharing that because it's a, it's a game to them. They, they think it's funny. And she's the one who started the game, <laughs> essentially. She's the one who, at, at the very least, if she didn't start it, she popularized it. Do you, do you believe if, say, a journalist posts something factually incorrect or wrong, especially about someone else, you know, if somebody was to say something factually wrong about you, do you believe they should remove that, or do you think they should be able to keep that content up? Um, Twitter is free speech. Um... <laughs> So, so, so Chaya, just, just to be clear, if a journalist went on Twitter and said that you, Chaya Rychik, were a mass shooter, that you yourself participated in mass shootings and had, like, uh, fun memes about you committing mass shootings, that's just free speech. They're under no obligation to actually recant that upon learning that it's false. Like, you can tell she is dull-witted, chat. She is dull-witted. Because if she was even, like, a fraction, a fraction intelligent here, she would know that this argument does not hold up for her. Yeah, she was just complaining about journalists reporting on her leading to death threats. Uh, okay, what if the journalists were just posting something on Twitter and fabricated it? Like, wholesale. She's saying she'd be fine with that. Because it, it's just free speech. You know, people lie about me all the time on there, and um, they, don't get, they don't get taken down. Um, if you want, it, it has to go both ways. So, so you believe that people should be allowed to keep up wrong information about you and have no recourse, be able to keep that up? Free speech is free speech. Okay, so I'm kind of curious how you square that with the letter that you sent this morning to V. Spear, claiming that, you know, you were going to try to sue her for slander. Um, you know, if free speech is free speech, then why are you threatening your critics with lawsuits? Well, defamation is different. So would you call misidentifying a shooter's sexuality defamation? <laughs> it, 
Defamation's different. Defamation's different. Yeah, like we just witnessed we just witnessed a murder chat. Like Taylor Lorenz has so much poise throughout this conversation with a hostile interviewee. And like she's she is nailing uh, the adage kill them with kindness. <laughs> You know, like, like she, she hasn't been mean during this. She hasn't been rude. She's been like her, even her tone is kind. And, and she's ju like, just, th this is the debate equivalent of a slaughter. Uh, no, I wouldn't. Um, like I said, there there's already a community note on it, uh, so I'm glad that people now. And you admit know. that it's wrong, right? It was the you've all these yeah, years and I wasn't it's... the creator of that of that image. Sure, but you can imagine if somebody amplified wrong information. You're you know, saying... the media, like you know, like Washington Post and other um, places, they lie all the time. They're never held accountable. They never remove it. They lie and lie and lie. So um, I am not gonna. If you want to hold me to that level, then then I get to hold you to that level as well, and all the other media. Um, so I just don't think, you know, it's... You know, I'm just kind of making this up as I go. Like, this is... I, like, I knew that this was bad. Like, I knew this was going to be bad for libs of TikTok. <laughs> but but my, my God, she's, de she's dead already. She just doesn't know it. You know, like, she, she's, she has been defeated here. Everything like I don't know how there are there's like forty more minutes of this. We're not. We're not. It's not. An, it's not. Uh, it's not accurate to to um, to compare it because was the Uvalde shooter trans? The Uvalde shooter wasn't trans. Got it. And so I guess knowing that you've posted wrong information, you're saying it should stay up, and everybody else should be allowed to keep whatever they have up as well. Is that sort of your stance? Am I accurately understanding it? Um, is there a law against... No, I'm not asking a law. I'm just asking your personal sort of opinion. I'm just kind of curious because it seems like you have come after other people, such as vSphere and other critics, saying, you posted wrong information about me, take it down. I totally get that. That's your prerogative. It's different be with defaming um, a, a journalist like that. How is it different? They're, they're defaming me. Uh-huh. And you don't think that calling a shooter trans when they weren't trans is defaming anyone? Uh, no. Okay. Interesting. Um, I guess I'm kind they're of... Like, no, they're knowingly lying about me. But th that's the point Taylor's making. Like, you are, you le you're leaving up a piece of your journalism claiming that the shooter was trans. And that's then being used constantly right now to attack other trans people and by you leaving it up you are knowingly lying about this case so i mean if it's different because they're like oh you're a journalist and you're being defamed you can also be defamed by a journalist uh-huh and you and what would you say that you did when you sort of posted that about the shooter being trans? Like I said, a, po a image that was going around for months that I shared from another thing accidentally, and I'm glad there's a community note on it. Okay, we got we got a new uh, we got a new thumbnail. Everybody, are you ready? You ready for the new thumbnail? Cartoon hair, bad. Bad thumbnail. I think it's all right. Might be able to do a little bit better. I don't know. That one I feel like isn't that impressive because I just found like a like the perfect comic book panel that like perfectly encapsulated my argument in in the video. <laughs> um. 
I know you come from a more traditional family um, and sort of a more traditional culture. What is your family and uh, think of your success? Um, you know, you've made a huge career for yourself. You're obviously a rising star in conservative media. How has that affected your interpersonal relationships? I'm not going to get personal. Uh -huh. I'm my personal relationships. Yeah. How has it affected your life? I mean, just dealing with this sort of fame relatively overnight. So, I mean, thanks and partly to you, there's been a lot of like death threats, uh, a lot of really nasty messages. Um, but you seem kind of proud about the press that you've received. I mean, your profile picture is showing, holding up a newspaper with you in the headline. Yeah, a newspaper where they just basically lied about me. Um, I thought it's, it's, uh, it's, it's funny that they, they just continue to make up these like lies and libels. I You've gotten a big, I mean, even if you discount the mainstream media and just talk about the conservative media, I think your platform has risen pretty significantly. What changes has that had on you? I mean, I cover the content creator industry and I've seen a lot of people go from sort of a very low key life, which I would imagine you're living before, to a massive amount of attention and, you know, money and powerful people around you. How has that affected you? Um. Like I said, uh, some safety issues, um, in part thanks to uh, to you and to some other members of the media, um, but I'm not going to get into my personal life. Oh no, not about your personal life, I'm just wondering about your career aspirations. Where do you see yourself in 10 years? We'll see. You can make all the plans you want and God could decide something else, so... So you don't have any sort of 5-year plan, 10-year plan? I mean, I have plans, but uh, nothing I'm going to share. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, you know, um, <laughs> if Trump was reelected, would you be interested in a job with his, his administration? Uh, maybe. Mm -hmm. Who are you supporting in the election? Uh, there's only one, there's one candidate, Trump. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Will you be campaigning on his behalf? Uh, we'll see. Would you prefer, would you, I mean, are you hoping to kind of, I guess like, would you see yourself in DC? I haven't made any plans yet. How did you um, get connected with Oklahoma, the state of Oklahoma? And how many times have you been to that state? Um, I was there once. They have, unfortunately, a lot of wokeness in the red state. And I went there one time. I got off the plane and I saw a black person. It was too much for me. I was overcome by the wokeness. I felt faint. I fell back, and I blacked out. Next thing I knew, I woke up back in sunny California. And I knew then and there, I knew then and there, I must eliminate the wokeness from Oklahoma. Like, that, that, this is essentially her, her story, right? Like that, that's her origin story, in a, in a nutshell. Because my, my understanding is that she lives in California. You know, she's an enemy of wokeness, but she lives in California. And uh, uh, I'm trying to help. How'd you originally sort of, what, how'd Oklahoma get on your radar as opposed to I, some others? Because I started posting about the stuff going on in schools there. Um, you know, like I do across the country. And by, by the way, uh, just just FYI, in case any of you don't know this, Oklahoma's a super majority. Like they have a they have like a full full con like conservative state legislature, full like conservative governor, everything. They aren't they aren't woke. Thought she was from the East Coast. Well, they're currently meeting in California, so maybe maybe I'm wrong about where she lives. I don't know. And, you know, people, you know, people were very upset that this was happening in their schools. So, and you've been once. Um, what do you think qualifies you to be on the board or, uh, you know, have to do with education, the education system there? Being that I don't believe you have children in the Oklahoma schools, you don't live in Oklahoma, you've both only been once. How does that qualify you to sort of serve on in that capacity? What are the qualifications that they require to be on this committee? Um, USA Today reported on that, but I believe it was that you had to, oh god, I'm not, I might get it wrong, but it, um, I think you have to be some sort of educator, you have to have worked as an educator. Okay, I was a teacher once. You were? Yeah. Okay. So you feel like that? I would love a follow-up question on that. What, what did you teach?
I want to know what she te- what what she taught because I have a sneaking suspicion it's something like <laughs> is that Chaya Raichik? It is indeed this run. I bet it's like some kind of like uh, religious teaching position. Like, oh yeah, I I like it, it'd be like me claiming that I was a teacher, but I worked as like a camp counselor at a Bible camp, you know? Qualifies you to sort of inform policies in Oklahoma. Um, I wasn't aware of any kind of qualifications that they require. Uh-huh. Um, I don't believe they require any qualifications. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. I was thinking more even just uninformally, um, but that makes sense. I guess, you know, speaking of Oklahoma, obviously we saw the tragic death of Nex, um, you know, a yeah, young very child. Tragic. I'm curious about your reaction. Um, you know, yeah, very tragic. Man, like, man, you could at least try to pretend you give a single shit that, like, you contributed to the death of, like, a, a trans child. You posted a selfie shortly after people were asking you to address the issue, and you said, you know, to, to the haters and the losers, who are you addressing in that statement? Anyone who hates me and anyone who's a loser. Okay. Why would you choose to post that in response to people asking you to speak about this child's death? It was not a response to that. I guess, why would you post that prior to making any statement about Nex's death? So, just to be clear, you're trying to police me on when I'm allowed to post selfies? No, just curious. I wanted to post it. I thought it was a cute picture, and I just decided to post it. How do you feel about Nex's death? It's very tragic. Uh-huh. It's horrible. Do you believe Nex should have been allowed to receive gender-affirming care? Uh, she should not be allowed to go on irreversible puberty blockers or get sex change surgery. Mm-hmm. How do you think about the fact that, you know, so often your posts, things that you post about hospitals, libraries, schools, etc. Um, I, I, again... I want to applaud Taylor Lorenz for having so much poise throughout this interview because this is um, this part in particular is very hard to listen to. Yeah, misgendering them in an interview about their death. Very cool. <laughs> yeah, also, yes, we we know puberty blockers, totally reversible. They don't have lasting impacts on children. Once you stop taking them, your normal puberty process resumes or begins, uh, or you can start taking uh, HRT and just go through the one puberty. Simple as. It's not complicated. We've been using puberty blockers on cisgender kids for literally like the last 60 years, 50 years. And uh, yeah, we know that there's no long-term ill effects. Any of the ill effects of puberty blockers are undone once you go through a puberty. You know, after you make these posts about them, they deal with threats, sometimes bomb threats, sometimes harassment. Um, it's, we don't know who's calling in the threats. Um, and I mean, look, bomb threats are bad. I've said that a thousand times. Um, people who call in bomb threats should be arrested and investigated. Uh, you can't call in bomb threats. Um, but I don't, I just don't know what it, what does it have to do with? Well, I guess, you know, um, a recent NBC investigation found at least 33 instances where you posted about a specific person or institution and that person or institution was immediately bombarded with death threats and violent threats, um, including bomb threats, other violent threats. That's a pretty significant correlation. How do you, you know, what are your thoughts yeah, on Yeah, I don't know if you saw, but I got like tons of death threats. Um, the past, this week, after the entire media machine came after me. So are they responsible for those? I don't think that there is um, the same correlation. Are you receiving bomb threats? I'm, I'm receiving death threats. Like, hi, I'm going to come murder you. Yeah, and I definitely sympathize with you there. Like, I get those literally, the article goes live, and then I get those threats. I get the same thing. 
Y yeah, but you, you recognize that there's a difference between, like, a vague threat towards you when they don't know where the hell you live and, like, a direct threat to a known institution or, like, civil servant whose address is public. When a Fox News article goes live. So are the, is the journalist response? Oh, interesting. In interesting. Radchick is a notably odd choice for the job. For starters, she does not appear to have any experience in schools or government and does not live in Oklahoma. Hmm. Though, according to some locals, that's not so different from the qualifications of the man who appointed her to the position. Elections have consequences. Crystal Legrone, uh, the chair of the Wagoner County Democratic Party, told the Daily Beast in August, and we get people like Ryan Walters in positions of authority where they really don't have any expertise and are attention-seeking. It feels like he wants to make a name for himself, not help the kids of Oklahoma, and that's probably the most accurate diagnosis we're going to get on all of this. The journalist who posted the article? I would say, um, you know, there's a different responsibility when we're talking about media. And I, and I guess to me, a death threat is different than a violent bomb threat. A death threat, I think we're kind of getting normalized to them, unfortunately, online. We get a lot of them. Probably you and I get them constantly, 24-7. I'm wondering kind of how you think about taking these obscure people, right? Because you and I are both public figures, and I, I imagine you and I can both, we have a high tolerance, right, for what we, what we can handle online. Say you're taking a private citizen you know, a gay teacher, for instance, in a small town, and you post about that person, and then that person subsequently, who had no media presence prior, receives pretty violent threats. How does that make you feel? We need it. We need to answer the, the question first, though. Is the, is the journalist responsible for actions that have to happen after? So you consider sort of your posts about private citizens, incendiary posts, you consider that journalism? I'm an independent journalist. Uh-huh. And do you think that there's a difference between doing journalism on a completely private figure that has no public presence and no institutional power versus reporting on a powerful public institution or person? You still didn't answer the question. Is the journalist responsible for reporting for any actions that happen after the reporting? Personally? I think that journalists should take care and should should you know should consider sort of the framing and I think that they should do their best not to it not to appear as if they encourage that sort of behavior. I haven't I've noticed that you haven't necessarily publicly condemned that behavior, publicly told your supporters, listen guys, stop, you know, stop calling in these bomb threats. Who said it's my followers? Do you, do you have information that it's my followers? Um, I guess who, who else's followers would it be? I don't know. So you There's post, 300 million people in this country. So you post, bomb threats follow, and you're saying it might be just unrelated people? I have no idea. Uh, we don't know who it is. Man, you, you know what's really great about having this on camera? Is that, like, her facial expressions are the least genuine I've ever seen in my life. Like, j just real quick. Just watch her face. Related people? I have no idea. Uh, we don't know who it is. Have you taken steps to... to like, my, my god. But yeah, no, uh, like, mass shooters have literally cited tibs, uh, libs of TikTok as motivation for their massacres. To find out? We filed some FOIAs with police departments. Mm -hmm. yeah. What have you found? Uh, we, we haven't got to anything uh, useful yet that we can use. But uh, actually, one of them, we know it's like some foreign actor, not even from the country. So huh. who knows who it is? Yeah. Um, it seems like Twitter is your main platform these days, although I know you've been posting on Rumble. How much money have you made from the platform? It's personal. Mm -hmm. Is that what sort of portion of your revenue um, is based on what, uh, Twitter as opposed to other platforms? That's personal. 
So speaking of Twitter, do you regret not getting a blue check? Because then you can make tons of money. No, I don't monetize online. You I don't monetize. Yeah, I don't. I, if I was an independent journalist, maybe, but I'm not. I, I don't monetize on any of my social platforms. Um, how, you know, I noticed you sort of, speaking of the media, you changed your approach recently, or at least it seems like you're being a little bit more antagonistic towards the media and a little bit more forceful in the way that you speak about the media. What led to that change? Uh, being lied about and defamed for two and a half years. <laughs> I guess what led to, uh, I would assume you felt like that for quite a while, what led you to sort of change your the way that you speak about the media or the... Sort of well, their attacks were ramping up, so like I said, you know, the lies and the defamation, hmm. the hypocrisy. You know, if you eradicate transgenderism, which I believe you suggested in a post today... No, I never suggested that. Oh, okay. You reposted a post that was advocating for that. What would happen to the people that have already medically, socially completely transitioned and are leaving? <laughs> I, I've never advocated for that. Bitch, we see, we see the tweets you delete. We see the tweets you delete, okay? Like, we've, we've covered them on the show. You, you, like, you, you posted, like, a picture of, like, a transgender person with the caption eradicate on it. We, we, we see you. You're not some, you're not some nobody. We see what you're doing. God. Hello, Adrian Vixen. Hello, Phoenix Blue. Hello, Kiwi Bird. God. Yeah, archive.org is our friend. Leading happy lives. What would happen to them? I mean, what's your plan for, for that? If transgenderism doesn't exist, which it seems like you're, that's what you believe, what happens to all the people living happy lives as trans people? Well, it, first of all, the whole trans is it's based on a lie. You can't change your you can't change your gender. Okay, but so they could they could go live their 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 life. I mean. I can't tell someone what to do in their in their house. Sounds like you do want to tell people what to do in their house. I never said that. So you're totally okay with people being trans, just not as long as they're in public. No, I never said that. They could. It's the whole thing is based off of a lie, and I think that um, the fa this lie cannot be mainstream in our in our society. It's just it's a lie. And what harm is it causing? Do you believe? Um, I like the truth. I like truth. Right, but I'm saying, what what's the what's the harm of people expressing their gender identity differently than you believe it to be? What what harm are they causing? Um, like I said, we like like again, all she has at the end of the day, she has platitudes. She doesn't have actual ideas. She has platitudes. Like, you can't even ask her why she believes what she believes, because at the end of the day, she's just like, I, I believe in truth. Yeah, but, but... Say more. You know, th this is... Um, at the end of the day, this is somebody who just dogmatically believes in their position, but doesn't have any of the intellectual foundation, any of the philosophical foundation to like actually make an argument for her position. She's just like, my gut tells me it's bad, so I need to kill it. Like, that's it. That's it. That's all that's, that's, all that's here, okay? That's all that's here. Um, also, folks, finished another thumbnail. Take a look. Dissecting the Mobile Oval TYT's scripted comedy ser experiment. There we go. I think that's going to be a banger. We're setting this one up to premiere March 1st, baby. Let's go. We got good content coming to the channel, guys. That was an experience. Yeah, now you need to get your friends and family to watch that experience. <laughs> okay, here we go.
We are a, a, um, a nation of truth, and I, I'm, I'm, I seek the truth. <laughs> we're, we're a nation of truth, says citizen of a country that, like, 20 years ago invaded another country because of a lie about nuclear weapons. But sure, okay. Jack, we got to work on your SEO. My SEO is dog shit. And I don't have time to try and make it better. My goal is to claw my way out of obscurity through sheer force of will and then hire somebody to edit my videos who actually knows how to do that stuff. But I'm asking about the harm. What's the harm? You might believe it to be false, but what's the, the harm? The harm is that there's a lie that is very mainstream and is being embedded into every institution. I guess I'm wondering what the material harm is, aside from it's maybe something that you disagree with, as in your yeah. But like, I I don't want to I don't want to just like take like a person from the community who can do it. You know, I want to be able to pay somebody to do the labor. You know, of the truth is different than their version of the truth. What is the material harm of them living their life as a woman or man or gender that you don't agree Not with? anything that's wrong is there a material harm necessarily. So there's no harm. I didn't say that. So also, to be fair, the actual name of the video is TYT's 2016 scripted comedy series is painful. So I feel, I feel, like, it, I feel like it's better. I feel like it's good. All right. Yes, you can. I know I can. The, the issue is I don't make enough money to pay people. If I made enough money to pay someone to edit my videos, I would be doing that instead of doing it right now at 1 o'clock in the morning on a Saturday. Can you name a single harm? Uh, the way that it's pushed, on, it's pushed on to kids, first of all. What's pushed on to kids? Uh, gender ideology, transgenderism. Uh -huh. But if they're leading happy lives... And they just are leading it. Well, there are studies that show that they're more suicidal after transition. No, that's there. There literally aren't. The, any any of the studies that have shown that have been debunked. The only situation in which a, a, a trans kid is more suicidal after they transition is if they have a non-supportive family environment. There are also the outliers of people who detransition, but again, the vast majority of people who detransition do so because of social pressure from friends, family, work, economic hardship, etc. The vast majority of people who detransition go on to retransition. It's not true. Yeah, there's a study out of Sweden. That is not yeah. true. That is not true. Yeah, you can look up the study. Well, taking into account all of the happy people that have transitioned, who are not harming anyone, you can't come up with a single material harm? So if someone says, I'll be happier if I'm blind, should a doctor pull their eyes out? I what? I think that's quite different than gender ideology, but people do, you know, I guess- Someone says I'm happier if I, if I chop my dick off and we should just let them do that. I think, you know, there's a lot of gender affirming care that women do, right? I mean, women ascribe to certain gender things. You see women getting boob jobs to affirm their gender. I mean, we're in Los Angeles. We see this kind of gender affirming. So again, you're... Uh, or again, breast reduction surgery, something that is done on minors. Um, I, knew, I, I knew a girl who got a breast reduction surgery in high school. Um, and it, it, it definitely affirmed her gender identity. She felt much better about herself after the fact. And, like, uh, more power to her, you know? You're comparing boob jobs and nose jobs to well, they're gender people affirming. Be, uh, buying into the lie that they could uh, change their sex. Breast enhancements are gender affirming for women. There's a lot of women that feel small chested. They feel like it would be gender affirming for them to have plastic surgery. And they're allowed to do it. And I, I noticed that you don't critique that. I guess I'm curious, Akaya, you know, there are a lot of people that have ideas about women, right? And about what makes a, what makes a woman, right? What makes a appropriate woman? How should a woman, you're saying you're not, you're against people sort of like living lies or living outside this um, ideology that you've constructed. Some might say, look, we're both women over the age of 25 working child. I certainly don't have kids, you know, um, 
they might consider that not okay for a woman. Do you think it's up to the, do you think it's okay for them to dictate how, you know, you live your life as a woman? Do you think it's up, up or sort of where does that line get drawn? So, so again, you're comparing uh, boob jobs to a teenage girl chopping up her breasts. Well, first of all, teenage girls get poop jobs, but breast enhancements are gender affirming for many women. I'm, I'm asking you, why is it that people have to live under your sort of view of gender? And it's not my view, it's science. It's facts, it's biology. But biology- But the vast majority of science disagrees with you. Like if, you, if you're, uh, I love when transphobes try to make an appeal to science because like, it, they're instantly full of bullshit. <laughs> like, the the transphobic position is not backed up by science. They have to claim that there is, in fact, a, a medical conspiracy among all major medical institutions in the United States to trans kids for some reason, which is insane. I, I shouldn't have to really spell out why that's insane. If, in, in, if we're talking biology, there's a spectrum of gender. There's people that are intersex. That is a very a rare medical condition. That yeah. has nothing to do with someone deciding that they could be the opposite gender. I guess I'm still kind of struggling to understand how you think if your view, say tomorrow Trump is elected, he says, all right, we're going to all live by Haya's, you know, decisions, right? What, what about all these happy trans people that are living their lives? They're not harming anyone. What is... What harm are they doing by living their life as a woman who medically transitioned, they're, they're adults. You know, I understand you have problems with kids, but with adult trans people, what, what's the harm that they're doing to society? To society, it's, they're, they're spreading a lie that is affecting children also. Uh -huh. So you just believe gender is, is a lie. And what if somebody said to trans, you- Trans, you can't change your gender. Uh -huh. And what if somebody said to you, you know, you're not a real woman. You're not a real woman because maybe you don't you don't meet these certain specific definitions of femininity. That's fine. I don't care. They can call me whatever you want. But what if you would be forced to live by that system? Do you think it's fair that you would you know be forced? Is that to based live? in like science? Well, I don't think any of it's really based in science. Well, it is. Gender is a sexes. social construct. Well, well, well gender is actually made up. Exactly. Um, yes, we agree on this. Who, we by, agree. By a child predator. Oh, yeah, th this will be the winning argument. Th this will be, this will surely, I, I love Chaya's brain. You know, this will surely be the winning argument. Gender was made up by a child predator. Like, Oh, okay. Okay. So when you're called a woman, you feel you feel angry because it's referencing child predation? What? This is insane. Hey, Snoogan. By a pedophile. Uh, we don't agree. Yeah. We so agree on so that. he made up gender. I I oh, oh, okay. I mean like all right, we let's let's just accept your premise. Uh, we should get rid of gender as a concept uh, based. We have achieved gender abolition. Welcome to the resistance, Chaya Raichik, the, the, the gender abolition resistance. God. And now they conflate the two and they use it to, uh, to basically uh, trans kids. Um, so there are actually two sexes. And there are zero. I, I, I hope I want the follow up to this to be like, so you, you think that if you read enough books about trans people, you would become trans. Like, that's what she's, that's what, that, that's what she's arguing here, right? Like, oh yeah. If you, you conservative man watching this, if you watched enough, uh, like RuPaul's drag race you would become a trans woman. Like, that's the argument that's being made here. It's silly. It's silly and bad. I watched Doctor Who all my life, now I can travel in time. 
genders and there are many personalities. That's what I believe. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of LGBTQ people say that your posts cause an enormous amount of pain. How does that make you feel? How does it make you feel that your reporting on me causes me pain? I feel sad for that, honestly. Yeah. yeah. So would you stop? Uh, no, I'm a journalist and you're a public oh, okay. figure. But I'm just talking about, you know, these, these non-public figures, right? These non-public figures that are... Well, if you put yourself out there on a public platform, then you're kind of making So anybody public. that posts on social media is a public figure, in your mind? Uh, if you're putting your videos out there with the intention that it should go viral, you want publicity. So if somebody's posting on social media, which inherently posting on social media, you're looking for attention, right? You're saying that that meets the bar for a public figure? Uh, I'm not a lawyer. But I'm asking your opinion. Uh, I think that these people, well, first of all, a lot of the people I post about are actually in positions uh, that are public, but teachers, But I'm talking about doctors. the people that haven't, right? The individual private citizens that you've posted who are not, I would, I would argue they're not public figures. You're saying they are public figures because they're posting on social media? They want to be public. They're, public, they're going on a public platform and publicly posting a video on a, on a social media site that is, that is meant for your videos to go viral. Uh huh. And what about Twitter? Would you consider Twitter as well a platform where stuff is meant to go viral? Every social media. If someone posts something on social media, that and it, it could go viral. It's always so, a risk. Got it. So when you were building your audience and had hundreds of thousands of followers, then would you also agree that you were a public figure? Yeah. Um, I think that if I, if anyone who puts something out there publicly, uh, anyone could share their stuff. Got it. And so, but I'm saying you consider these people. LGBTQ people who are just posting on social media public figures. I said I'm not a lawyer. I don't know the legal. I'm just asking your opinion. <laughs> one thing you one thing you noted, and I'm I'm only asking this because I know that you've noted that, um, you know, when I reported on you, that you felt like it was unfair and that you didn't meet the bar for a public figure. So I'm just kind of wondering, as somebody with such a large social media audience, you're saying people with much smaller social media audiences meet the bar for a public figure. Wouldn't you have considered yourself a public figure? Um, if anyone puts out uh content publicly then th that content could go anywhere that's what i believe you know oh okay so like if somebody if if somebody posts uh i i love how she's come so far away from like her original position of like yeah people who are uh pe you know people are spreading lies about me and that's that's defamation and now she's just like well you know if you post anything on a on a social media then it, it can just go anywhere it can just go anywhere it's fine my god. Hey, native gamer. Does that mean she's read a trans book? She said she read several. It could go viral. Anyone could share it. It could go to the wrong side. You know what they call the wrong side of TikTok. Yeah. Uh, it could go, you know, people will see it. You, you can't control that. Mm -hmm. that that's, why, that's why they hate me, because they want to create this content and they only want their bubble to see it. And then I'm like showing it to other people and they just can't handle it. I think you're editorializing it as well. No, I provide very little commentary, probably the least from any other Twitter account that's even a quarter of my size. Let's talk about drag shows. Um, you know, you've come out a lot about, you know, you're very against drag shows. Can you give any examples of children being harmed from drag shows? Yeah, there was one where this mom was saying that her kid decided to be uh, non-binary uh, after watching the drag show, and then the drag queen helped the kid buy like new clothes to be non-binary. And you consider that harm? Oh, oh no! A kid, a kid decided that they were non-binary, and then a drag queen out of like the goodness of their heart like help them buy new clothes T truly truly getting clothes is harm yeah well because non-binary is made up like you can't there's no such thing as non-binary um and then it just leads a kid on a path uh where probably they'll end up on in a hospital getting some of their body parts chopped off you seem very against plastic surgery. Are you against? No, I'm against sex change surgeries. Uh huh. What about women that want to get their boobs done, want to get their nose done, want to get cheek implants? We're just gonna go in circles. 
I'm just curious. But I, I, it's good yeah. to note that you're you're uh, comparing nose jobs to um, to teen girls getting their breasts chopped. Well, people often teen girls also get boob jobs to make their breasts bigger, right? So at the, both are both are gender affirming in different ways. You seem very obsessed with one and not interested in the other. So that's kind of what I'm interested in. And I I guess I don't really understand that because both are gender affirming in different ways. Um. I don't call it gender affirming care. I call it uh, sex change surgeries for people who are sold a lie that they can change their sex. Uh huh. Where do you sort of hope this will end up? You know, like all of this sort of the advocacy that you're doing. Um, I know you said you don't have a five year plan for yourself, but what are some, what, what's, if you were sort of like gonna describe your platform, what, do you, what, do you, what are some things that you'd like to see, meaningful changes in terms of policies, laws? Oh, I want to eradicate, eradicate gender ideology from, from public life. From oh, then why earlier did you say you didn't want to eradicate transgender people? Like, the only way you eradicate transgender ideology from public life is by getting rid of all of the trans people. public life completely yeah the whole thing is built on a lie well you certainly have a gender yourself gender ideology no i don't i have a sex gender uh, oh <laughs> okay so chaya raichik doesn't have a gender Ch chaya raichik is genderless chat i i guess tec technically a gender Perhaps this interview has gone in some wild directions. My my God, would would the term be a gender? Mm, true pestilence. God. There's no such thing as gender. Okay. I said gender is made up. There's no such thing I as gender. I agree that gender is... <laughs> there, there's no such thing as gender. Okay, try and argue with the, uh, the government forms that require you to list your gender. I, I, I'd love... I'd love... I'd love... Now, here's the thing, though, right? Like, we're guffawing at this interview. But keep in mind, she doesn't actually believe anything she's saying. You know, like, she'll say in this interview she doesn't believe that gender's real, but then she'll go about her day, like, acting as if gender's real, because she's not consistent on any one idea, you know? And, like, she she's not going to be consistent, because, again, that would require introspection. That would require her to, like examine her internal existence, her thoughts and her actions and her words and come to a conclusion about them and she's not going to do that because she's a fascist and fascism is antithetical to introspection. A completely social construct. No, it doesn't exist. It's okay. uh, there's zero, there are zero genders. I have a sex, I'm female. There are zero genders. Yeah. So you want to live in sort of a post-gender world where everybody can kind of express themselves through personality however they like. Well, that's what it is now, uh -huh. but they're just calling it gender. So, but you know, is... there's males and females, and then you know, so if there's they were to, infinite. Let's, I'm just kind of curious here, and I'm yeah. certainly not a gender scholar, so I'm not sure. You know, maybe somebody sort of posed this question too. But if people were to just let's just say, you know what? Fine, we eliminate. We eliminate male, female, non-binary, whatever gender, we eliminate that. We're all just people, or we identify by our sex. Um, would you still be okay with people, you know, uh, dressing, wearing dresses if, you know, they appear to be biologically male, or, um, you know, women shaving their head, you know, things like that. Would you, are you still okay with that, as long as they're not calling themselves by a different name? Um, don't sexualize kids. That's what I'm against. But I'm just saying, like, you're, you want to live in a post-gender world where there's no gender, right? And anybody can just have the personality and express themselves however they want. That's how it is now. These people who are calling themselves a different gender, 
But I'm it's just saying you're, you're not right, really and a... your issue is with the with the language around that, right? So I'm saying let's eliminate the language. All right, do you support people, adults? Let's just talk about adults for the sake of you know this discussion. Do you support those adults? having bodily autonomy, dressing, acting, you know, painting their nails or shaving their head or doing whatever they want to do to express themselves. I don't care if a guy wants to paint his nails. So you don't care, you don't care about... Leave the kids out of it. Don't sexualize the kids. Don't confuse the kids. So speaking of sexualization of kids, you know, I think one group of young people that's constantly sexualized... One thing I really want to give Taylor Lorenz credit for is knowing when to change off of a question. I feel like this would be a very tedious uh, interview if she tried to nail Chaya down on any one of these points. But after like asking like a couple of different times on one topic, a couple of different ways, like um, Taylor just moves on. You know, and I think that that's that's wise. That's a wise uh, maneuver in this type of uh, interview. Mint Medium, thank you for watching the last three streams. Is young women. Um, what are your thoughts, and and why haven't you, um, I guess, come out more against some of the the sort of sexualization of young women, especially in the right wing media ecosystem? There's a focus on youth. In women, um, there is a focus on sort of women under 25, women losing value with age. This is stuff you know that's been. I'm a woman on the daily in the one. in the conservative movement. I never once felt sexualized. You've never felt sexualized yourself, but I'm saying, how do you? Why don't you speak out about sort of sexual abuse in in the straight world? I guess. So, you, you just change topics. No, no, no. I'm saying like you're saying we're, we're against the sexualization of kids. Yeah. One group of children that's constantly sexualized is young women. 13-year-old girls, 14-year-old girls are constantly sexualized on the internet, often by conservatives. So I'm wondering... True. True. This is very true. And not only that, like, I've seen this happen to people I know. You know, like one of my one of my memories from being a kid was like walking down the street uh, with my cousin um, and my cousin, I think had just turned like 13 or 14 and like grown grown adult men honking their horns at her, you know? Like, like cat calling her as we're walking down the street. It was gross. It happened like three or four times on one walk. It is so normalized in society that it just will happen like crazy. Yeah, Lily loves stuff. I, I've, heard, I've heard cases as young as like nine. You know, like, uh, like, girlfriends that I've I, I've had over the years like talking about how they hit puberty like at, at nine years old and then boom suddenly grown ass adult men would be leering at them and hitting on them it's it's disgusting, and it is very much normalized, and it is also very prevalent in conservative circles. Especially given, you know, what some... And I, I think that it is not that big of a stretch to um, connect that with uh, the fact that conservatives object to the concept of consent... It's no wonder that then they uh, fetishize girls, underage girls, who are too young to know about consent. You know, who are too young, uh, you know, specifically to have gone through sex ed classes that talk about consent. This is why, by the way, I'm a huge supporter of sex ed being incorporated at all levels of education. 
because what what sex ed looks like in like kindergarten is just being like oh we need to keep our hands to ourselves you know you're you're in charge of what happens to your own body you know like that's that that's the beginning of sex ed right and then that evolves each each year to be a, more age appropriate like here are what the different parts of the body are called you know in, in first grade in, in second grade like here are what different parts of the body are called and here is what stranger day you know like it, it evolves every year specifically centered around the idea of keeping kids safe but if you live in a district that has outlawed ideas uh being taught uh, around sex education or consent those kids never learn that which opens them up to being prime targets for conservatives who know that those kids are too young to have learned that in school. Hi, pretty lady doodle L. Doodleburb, thank you for subscribing over on Twitch. I appreciate it. Thank you for being one of the non-transphobic chatters today. I appreciate you and hope you're doing well. Here we go commentary has come from from like people at the daily wire for instance right they've made comments about young women women losing value with age which is kind of a pedophilic ideology yep why why not speak yeah no the, the ideology of like women losing value as they age by the construction of that thought or idea values the youngest possible women right up to and including underage girls. Which is partly why, like, a lot of grown adult conservative men are, like, ogling, like, 15-year-olds, 16-year-olds. It's gross, it's disgusting, but that is the society we currently have. And I'm a very big proponent of changing that, and, uh, yeah, I hope you all are, too. Jesus Christ. I, I've never seen that. I have no evidence. You've of... never seen young women getting sexualized? Um, I focus on kids. And you've never seen young girls getting sexualized? I've seen young girls getting sexualized. I'm referring to the Daily Wire thing. I, I can't answer okay, for but that. Okay, but let's just talk about young girls. Why don't you speak out about that? Why don't you speak out about sort of heteronormative, cisgender men, traditional men, sexualizing young girls, young female girls. I speak out about the sexualization of, ch of kids. But you don't? Proof that I'm not a transphobe. Kiwi Burb, thank you for the $5 dono. I appreciate it. But like, it, yeah, uh, I think Taylor Lorenz actually has a very good kind of gotcha question here, which is like, you're constantly talking about how you care about the sexualization of young young kids, but like, you never talk about the most common way that young kids are sexualized. Speak out about sort of the sexualization of kids by straight people. I don't discriminate on who's sexualizing the kids. But if the you, kid's being sexualized... Well, but... Well, also, Melee Ethos, I don't have a problem with a 24-year-old dating a 39-year-old. Like, that's a, that's a definitely, like, that age gap is a definite, like, difficulty in a relationship that creates, like, a weird power imbalance. But that's not, like, insurmountable, right? There are some people with that type of age gap that are perfectly happy. But if, it, if it's, like, a 14-year-old and, like, a 28-year-old... Yeah, that, 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 would, that would be really fucking gross. If if it were like a sixteen year old and like a thirty two year old, yeah, that's that's concerning. That's concerning as hell. Twenty eight and eighteen is also a problem. Again, there has to be like a cutoff somewhere. Like, yeah, it's definitely problematic, but like. 
there there there's a cutoff somewhere. At 18, you're a legal adult. You can go and join the military and like get blown up for the imperialist agenda of the United States. Uh, yeah, you you can also make poor decisions about who to who to date. Like obviously. Hey, Amber Brains. Oh, yes, Pinfold. That's a good one, too. The conservative fascination with virginity as a concept. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Only one group of kids that you're talking about, which is you're concerned about sort of people being sexualized by the LGBTQ community. I'm asking, I'm saying a lot of straight older men. Not necessarily the LGBTQ. I mean... If they're, you know, I don't want straight teachers to be talking about their sexuality in schools either. So you don't, you wouldn't be okay with a straight teacher. Man, that's weird because I've never seen libs of TikTok uh, highlight like a teacher who's talking about how they just got married to their students if it was a straight marriage. I've literally never seen libs of TikTok make an issue of like a straight teacher talking about being straight. For instance, discussing their marriage. I think it's weird. Uh huh. Why would someone discuss their marriage in a classroom? Honestly, I don't know. You were a teacher. I feel like teachers sometimes do that. You know, I I do think that there is a sexualization of children um, from straight couples. I mean, I know that I went shopping for a friend recently to find little baby onesies, and when you're looking for little boy baby onesies, a lot of them say, you know, I want. Where's my mommy's tits or whatever? You know, you see these kind of. Yeah. I would say sexual innuendo on baby's clothes. I've never seen you post about that. I've never seen you post about sort of sexualization from the straight community, I guess. I've never just, I don't discriminate against who's doing the sexualization. Um, I also, I guess, like, what are you defining as sexualization? But um, I've never said like, like, oh look, here's porn in school and the librarian is not straight. No, I don't, I don't care who the librarian is. I don't care if they're, they're straight or gay. You, you absolutely care if they're straight or gay. Like 10,000%. Like you, you think it's worse if they're gay. Gay or trans or whatever they, they want to say they are. Yeah, you know, I just I, think it seems, it, I guess I wonder why you don't focus on sort of like young girls as a woman. I mean, were you ever sexualized as a young child? No. I find that interesting because I think all women kind of experience that, although it depends on your community. But I do think that there's a, a focus on women and, and age as well. And there's this notion that women um, lose value as they age. And I know I hear that all the time in my comments from conservatives. I've never once seen that. Actually. You've never seen that? No. I feel I've like never you... seen a conservative figure say that women lose value when they age. Why do you think? Let's see. Here's a video from Prager U. Uh, do, Amala, do, do women lose value as they age? Amala Ekpanobi. Um, women lose their value the older they get. Uh, from Adam Sosnick. Oh, look, there's uh, Adam Sosnick and uh, Pearl Davis. Interesting. Uh, here's a left v. right debate. Women don't have any value. Baby, it's time to sell. Here's uh, the sauce cast with Adam Sosnick. Adam Sosnick, by the way, is the guy from the um, Valuetainment show uh, with Patrick Bet David. He's the um, he's that weirdo who interjects a lot. Yeah.
you know, any any of the red pillars who talk about uh, how to be a high value man think that women lose value over time. That's a pretty common position for them to have. Um, Yeah. I don't know. This is not an uncommon idea in conservative circles. I just typed conservative women lose value as they age as the Google search. Not not the most scientific method. I think there's such an obsession about women and ages then. Women I, I've never known there was an obsession. I don't really. Know. Yeah. Huh. Women and ages? Yeah. Yeah, it's not it's not like there are tons and tons of products geared towards women to to reduce the signs of aging yeah sure bud um there is a notion especially platformed by conservative media that women lose value as they get older um you see this espoused constantly when people are talking about reproductive capabilities oh her eggs you're are saying when they promote like family values like oh you should get married and have kids is that what you call sexualization no 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 i'm talking about more um derogatory remarks made against women and their age I bring it up because I think a lot of your fans seem to obsess about women and ages, and so it just, yeah, it just, I, it's misogyny at its core, and I never see you speak up about that, so I was just kind of curious about Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm wondering, like, like, why you don't speak up about the sexualization of kids. I don't think it's a problem. I don't see, I guess I don't see as much, if I saw an example of a child being sexualized, of course I have a problem with, you know, certain things, I, I will, I will actually, you know, I will say- So do you I think we should give kids porn in school? The, the images of like gay sex? And I, so I had public, again, I went to public school and in public school, at least when I was growing up, we were absolutely given um, literature, you know, explaining sex, educating people. It had pictures of like anal sex? Oh, absolutely. And it actually talked about condom use. What grade? Based. God, I mean, I don't remember, but certainly probably middle school. I think that's when we had sex ed. Um, so you think like books like Gender Queer, this book is gay, we should give that to kids in school? I have not read those books, so I don't know. But I do okay. think that it's important to educate kids about sexuality, if nothing else, because, you know, I have spoken to women um, that were abused um, sexually when they were young, very young. And one thing that they've told me is that they wish that they had the language to talk about it and they weren't educated. They grew up in a I only know two that I've spoken to about this, but they've grown up in sort of societies where they weren't very educated about sex ed. They didn't receive sex ed in class. They went to a Catholic school or other sorts of schooling. And so I do think it's really important for kids to understand sex because as we all know, a lot of teenagers can be sexually active. And I think sex education is important to promote, you know, healthy attitudes, healthy understandings of sex. I mean, these are human bodies. You can't just expect to send kids off at 18 with absolutely no sex ed and then True. that they can function in the world. So we should give kids um, like pictures of gay sex in, in middle school? And yeah, you, you, you need to give them diagrams and pictures so that they understand what sex is. That 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 is part of sex ed. Like, and part of the reason you need to do that, you need to introduce sex ed early enough that like the vast majority of kids aren't sexually active so that when they become sexually active they're able to stay safe that's that's why you introduce it early and then you build on concepts like consent to make sure that kids stay safe aren't abused like we know we know from some of the longest longitudinal studies out there that when you have a sex ed program that is comprehensive, you protect kids. You are able to stop and decrease the amount of sexual assault geared towards children and sexual abuse of children because children are then able to articulate what has happened to them. They're able to find the appropriate help. They're able to uh, keep themselves safe. And in the cases where they aren't able to do that, they're able to identify who did it to them. They're able to articulate what happened. And that helps catch more child predators. So sex ed, to be against sex ed, by the way, is to be in favor of more children being sexually assaulted. That, that is just a fact. 
I know, I know what I'm in favor of, and my position is we should get the number of children sexually abused to zero. But I, I, what's incredible to what's incredible to me is that conservatives will look at uh, like, oh, we could reduce the number of uh, kids being raped, but it would require showing them some diagrams of anal sex. That's a bridge too far. I guess we'll just have to live with things the way they are. Like, that's, that's, that's a terrible argument. But it's the argument that conservatives present to their constituents time and time again. And they rely on their constituents being dumb, being ignorant, being uneducated. But it doesn't have to be that way. Is there literally anyone who's buying the whole porn in school bullshit? Yep, there is, unfortunately. Un unfortunately, that is a common thing for conservatives to believe. They believe that uh, books like This Book is Gay have, like, uh, tons and tons of pornographic images. Basically, like, it's a, a graphic novel version of a, a Pornhub search result queue. Like, that, that's genuinely what they think. That's genuinely what they think. <sighs> well, and that's the thing, Derp G's. I don't think conservative talking heads or conservative politicians actually believe anything. But their base does, you know? Actually, elementary school, some of them. I guess I'm wondering what you consider that. I think. Do you that, want to see a picture? Well, I don't know, but um, I mean, I, are you talking about the ones that you've posted on, yeah. on your Twitter account? Yeah. I guess those don't look like what I received when I did sex ed, but I think sex ed is important because it, it actually helps. So you didn't have those types of things when you were in school? Oh no, we had sex ed. I'm I, saying the images not, I posted on my not, Twitter. Did you, when you had sex ed in school, did you not get books with, with graphic with imagery? With pictures of gay sex? I remember, I, I don't know, I can't, I don't remember how old you are, but I grew up in the 90s when HIV and AIDS was a big thing, and we certainly learned about gay sex in school. So you, so those pictures I post on my Twitter, you Yeah, yeah, you should learn about gay sex because you need to be able to stay safe from STDs, from uh, predators, from uh, people trying to coerce you into sexual situations. Like, if you don't, if you just don't know about sex, it leaves you wide open to all kinds of damage. Had graphics like that? Inside. I actually don't know. I haven't, I, I don't remember, to be honest. But I do think that it's really important to But knowing those kids. pictures, you seem to know very well what my, those pictures are. Do you I think don't, that? I don't. I've seen oh, you. Oh, you kept referencing it. Well, I've seen you post things, well, but I, I don't know. Well, then I should pull it up. Um, what? But I think, yeah, I, mean, I guess like, I feel... Because we need to put this into context. Yeah. Well, we won't know the context, of course, because we don't know the context of how those things are being taught. Oh, so we could give kids, like, pictures of gay sex as long as it's in the proper context? I don't know. I mean, it's up to the educator to determine, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I guess I'm kind of curious, Kaya, why... Why you sort of focus so much about the LGBT? You keep mentioning gay sex, but you don't mention straight sex. Why is there such a focus on the LGBTQ world? Oh, I don't want pictures of sex in school. Any pictures. So you don't think children should receive any sort of sexual education, straight or gay? I said I don't want pictures of sex in school. But you think that they should receive picture-free sex education? But part of the issue is without the pictures, it's a lot harder for them to learn like what what do you want do you want teachers graphically describing like a vagina to their students like what my god uh no i think we discussed this earlier okay yeah i'm curious kind of how you're thinking you know when you think about your the way that you put out content and the way that you think about growing your media empire here this is a, a blowjob What, I don't know what book this is from. Gender. My my God, how like like Chaya Raichik is like insane. 
right? Like, th this is an insane thing to do. Like, in the middle of a conversation, here, this is a blowjob. Like, she reads it in the same cadence as, like, uh, the, the, the terrorist from Die Hard reading uh, the note from John McClane, Hans Gruber. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. Like, my, my god. Like, it, it's the same. Psychopathic behavior. Queer. Okay. So should this picture of a blowjob be in elementary schools? I've never seen a book like that in elementary schools, but I have no- Also, not- not a blowjob. That- It's, it's an image of, like, a strap- a strap-on for an educational purpose. Oh, it, it has been. Okay. I've posted about it, yeah. So, tell me a little bit so about- So, should it be in elementary school? I have no idea the context. I have no so idea- So, in what context, context should it- is it okay if it would be- the context of this is that, like, the library was, I, I believe, if I'm familiar with this case, uh, the library was not an elementary school library, it was instead a library for, like, a high school, middle school combo, um, and, like, I think the elementary school might have technically been able to access that same library, but, like, it's not the elementary school library. Was that in a textbook? No, it's in a book called Gender Queer. Which is a book about being queer. I have absolutely no idea. I have absolutely no idea. I would not. I I don't know, Kaya, because I haven't seen the rest of that book. I don't know what's in there. I don't but know the you, but there is a context that it would be okay to give kids pictures like that of gay sex. In sure, a, in a sex ed class. Sex in, in I guess sex. I guess sex pictures in school. I don't know. I don't know because uh, you know who I would defer to on that. Just because neither of us are sex educators, I would defer that question to a qualified professional, a sex educator, and say, hey, you're an expert. You've treated tons, you know, you've educated tons of people. You're a full-time sex educator. You've really studied this. What are the appropriate boundaries? I don't oh, it's a graphic memoir. Okay. Still fine. That my self Wait, the book is about being asexual? The, the, <laughs> the, okay, I didn't know that part. The, the scene is literally about someone trying sex and being like, ah, this isn't for me. And they still have a problem with it. My god. As a journalist or a media personality, I don't think I'm the right one to make that decision. And I guess I'm wondering why so you there, So there, the, I have seen sex educators say that they, they want these, these books in, in schools. So then uh -huh. you're okay with it? I think I would want to talk to the sex educator and rely on whatever the sex educators say. Okay. I'm wondering why you feel like you're qualified to be a sex educator when you have no background in that. Uh, I don't want to be a sex educator. I just don't want to give kids porn in school. Mm -hmm. I totally understand. Tell me a little bit more about sort of, you know, this change topic, about your content world. You know, you put out a lot. You've got a whole I have to. I have to say, again, look at the, uh, like, the things got a little bit heated there. But Taylor Lorenz is is really good at this. It got heated, but then she just cha like just changes the topic and returns to like the normal friendly conversational tone. This is very very well done. Like very good staff now how do you see your business growing and what areas would you like to expand into uh, i'm not going to get into my business strategy uh-huh do you see yourself i've noticed that you've been doing more video content are you leading harder into rumble um i like doing video content do you have a partnership with rumble no would you no oh, maybe what are your thoughts on sort of the way that twitter has evolved um i love twitter <laughs> the best i love elon elon rocks have you spoken Elon to saved Elon? free speech. Not like on the phone. Have you thought, would you meet with her? Yeah. Um, what's been sort of... What's been your like kind of criticism of Elon? Because you're like outspoken against Elon. 
I, you know, I'm a huge supporter of free speech and free expression, and I haven't liked um, the way that Elon has kind of arbitrarily banned journalists. I think that's a little concerning. Who did he ban? Oh, many. I mean, he banned, uh, I think he banned Tyler Brown, the researcher. He banned, obviously, myself, Drew Harwell, other journalists. Um, so what, So, how do you feel about all of the conservatives that were being banned left and right when Jack Dorsey had Twitter? I'm, you know, I'm of the personal opinion, and I've said this on Twitter and many times, um, that, look, it's up to every private platform to set their own community guidelines. I'm not a huge believer in permanent bans. And I've always said that. And I, you know, I defend that in the sense that these platforms evolve and people's usage of them evolve and people evolve. As you just said, you weren't even a, you were a completely private citizen five years ago. You had no political ideology. Now you have a political ideology. You're a very different person. So when I got banned from Twitter, you, you were upset at that? Like you thought that was wrong? Um, I don't remember you getting banned from Twitter. I got banned a few times. Not permanently, oh, but- Oh, previous to Elon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 my feeling about any bans is that there should be a path to redemption, should you say. That doesn't mean that I don't think that it's in the right prerogative to ban people for five years, ten years, whatever. I just personally feel like if you're going to issue lifetime bans, you should give people a path to abide by community guidelines. If you join back on and you break community guidelines again, look, that's on you. But personally, I think that, you know, I, I, that's just my belief and I've talked about that for years. I think that there should be a path to um, path to abiding by. If somebody says, hey, look, I know I broke community guidelines. I know what I was posting was wrong. And in sort of violating those rules, I could see, yeah, I could see, I could see um, tech companies allowing that back. And actually, that's what Elon has done, right? I mean, he reinstated all those people that were permanently banned. Elon is the greatest free speech warrior, I think, of all time. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> well, I try to think what else. I feel like I've gotten through. Yeah, most I think of these that's things. it. I think we're good. What else do you have going on? Uh, nothing much, you know. I'll just continue uh, making fun of the media like I do best. Um, I still can't, I, I don't think you answered me to begin with, but what are some of your favorite media outlets? I said I like independent journalists. But who? Like uh, some of the people I follow on Twitter have the best news. Like who? Like who are your top three? Um, I would say, <laughs> first of all, I love Daily Wire. Um, of you course. Know, I, I like uh, Ben Shapiro, Matt Walsh. Ooh. You know, it is actually kind of fascinating that the Daily Wire hasn't tried to make her an offer. I feel like she's somebody that they would want to get on board just for, like, the clout she would bring. Even though she would obviously make terrible content, and also, like... I, I imagine they haven't reached out to her because, like, she's an enormous, like, legal liability with libs of TikTok. I, I like everything they do. Um, I like, I really like Jack Posobiec. Shout out to Jack. He's great. Uh, I like Mike Cernovich. He's, he's cool. Ah, yes. Mike, Mike Cernovich, the, the guy who popularized P Pizzagate. C cool. Um, who else is there? Yeah, there's a few others. Are you still on Substack, by the way? I know you had a Substack at some point. Yeah. What are your top uh, media place for news? 404 Media. Love 404 Media. Are you familiar with them? No. Great website. Uh, independent journalist. Um, Walter Bragman, who does Important Contacts. Great Substack writer. A huge fan of his work. Um, God, there's so many. Uh, Matt Bellany, Lucas Shaw, Julia Alexander. Yeah, great, great people. Um, yeah, I'm trying to, okay. I'm trying to see, I feel like that's it. I'm just trying to think of an Uber and get out of here. I'm going to order an Uber. Awesome. All right, let's make sure. Let's see. I know. Sorry. Thank you so much. Let's see. Oh my God. I think this Do we not see oh her stand God, up? Oh man. I wanted, I wanted to see her outfit so bad. Like pictures of it were going around on YouTube. Uh, not YouTube on, on Twitter. Ugh. Maybe I can find, like, a picture real quick. But, uh, yeah, libs of TikTok. Um, again, the, these people are not intelligent. They're not smart. They're just able to, uh, for whatever reason, luck, uh, positioning, nepotism, they're able to uh, get into positions where they're able to leverage their bigotry into positions of power. That, that is essentially it. Right? Like, she, she 
it's okay for her to be a no talent hack. It's okay for her to be like completely unintelligent because that's not what is important for her role. And in fact, those aspects, if she possessed them, would hinder her from doing her job, you know? Um, do we have a picture here from the past day? just want I want the I want the jean skirt I want it so bad ah no one's talking about the denim skirt damn it Oh well. It goes from her waist all the way down to her ankles. It's crazy. It's like a crazy amount of skirt to have. What's this? Rod yeah. Sims, the former head of the ACCC, says that we have We've... one of the most concentrated supermarkets it's in the world. Is true. he lying? It's not true. His words are that Retired. we have... Yeah. ...to believe that an... Yeah. Rod yeah. Sims, the former head of the ACCC, says that we have one of the most concentrated supermarkets i mean i this will absolutely get dmca'd uh sorry uh, i'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep playing that um can someone please convince me that interview actually did anything for us whatsoever it didn't really do anything for us it was mostly if I'm gonna if I'm gonna be honest, it was mostly a bit um made me feel a little bit better, I guess. Like I, I like having confirmation that my opponents are evil and dumb. I feel like it I feel like it helps knowing that when it comes to fighting fighting them, you know? Um and in I guess in a profession or a position where like social perception matters a whole lot, you know, being on social media and such, like her doing a face-to-face -face interview and getting absolutely lambasted for an hour straight um, while being completely, completely inconsistent, that's only good. I don't know how many people or if any people will be brought over by it, but it will, I think, lead to a lowering of libs of TikTok's, you know, social stock, you know. I, I think people will put less uh, credence in what she has to say as a result of this, and I think that's generally a good thing, you know.